How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another edition of the podcast. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about shoulders and a little bit of a progress update on the weight loss. So let's get right into it. So shoulder day, Thursday. Thursday was a shoulder day and I had a little bit of a some newer newer work or newer movements that I implemented today. To kind of get started on what was going on, I got back into incorporating my dumbbell shoulder press. I did three sets of 10. Two of them were successful. It was at 75 pounds. And the last set was actually for six reps. So it wasn't really the best. It I had taken probably about a week, maybe a week total off from from doing this movement. And then yeah, just just barely getting back into it now and trying to implement dumbbell shoulder press. I think without a spotter, it's really hard once you get that weight up to the prepped position to get those elbows to at least parallel to the ground. And a spotter can can be a real big big key help to 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 getting that weight where it needs to be so then you can start pressing but I decided I'm gonna stay at 75 pounds I'm just gonna be there for a little bit that'll be my home for the the next couple of weeks I'm not in a hurry to to move past that but after that I moved to the shrug machine now this is a movement that I I used to do five sets of ten but I'm really kind of just getting tired of it. Uh, I enjoy shrugging, but I am getting tired of just continuing to go back to that machine and staying there for five sets is, that's a long time. So I actually just did three sets of 10. I did three 45 pound plates, one 25 pound plate and one five pound plate. Now this is an increase from the last time I had done it, but it is a weight that I'm going to be staying at. I started to stop feeling the contraction in my shoulders or in my traps when getting the weight up to the the highest position, I guess. So because of that, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of just stay here for a little bit. Excuse me. And after that, one of the newer exercises that I've implemented is dumbbell front raises. And I started with 25 pounds today. I had done this same 25 pounds last workout and it felt a little bit challenging. So I decided I'm just going to stay there one more, one more week. And this week it felt really good. And I think I'm just going to, to move up from, from here. I'll be doing maybe the, the, the 30 pounds starting next week. So after that, it was uh, dumbbell side raises, and this is an exercise that f- has felt really good week after week. I, I was at 25 pounds for the longest time, and then I ended up um, moving from 25 pounds to um, 30. So I was actually able to make the, the, the jump in that. And it's, it's, it's felt really good. I mean, the, the side dumbbell raises is uh, a really good movement for me. It's a really good sort of semi-challenging movement. I'm able to feel the, the contractions in my shoulders and really just get a good full range of motion with that. Moving on from there, I, I then progress to the rope face pull, which I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep this one if I'm going to substitute it out for something else. I know that this week I was supposed to start doing new movements, like new exercises. I wasn't going to stick with uh, my previous movements. And unfortunately, this is one that sort of made its way over. I think that I'm going to take it off the list, though. But today's rope face pulls was 100 pounds. I've been there for probably the past three weeks now. So I think it's I think it's definitely time to to sort of pack my things and move on from that one. Then I did the rear delt flies with the cables, and I used to 
I used to track the weight on this. However, it's my last movement of the day, and I decided for this movement, I'm just going to go off feel. I don't want to feel the, I guess, the, the, the stresses or the pressures of having to continue to make progress on every single movement that I'm doing. So with that being said, that since this is the last movement, um, I've decided I'm just going to go with feel. As long as I'm feeling the contractions of my muscles, as long as I'm feeling that full range of motion, then I'm not going to worry about the the amount of weight that I'm doing this time as compared to last week. And then I finished my workout with 30 minutes on the treadmill at an incline of four this time and a speed of 2.8. And it was it was a really good way to finish out the work, the workout. And when I had done that, I was working on some of my Instagram posts and I went back into my, my lifting logs and I, I went down the list and ended up checking some of the, the progress on the, the weight. Well, my weight actually, (coughs) excuse me. And let me see here. I ended up making an Instagram post on my stories so three months in and currently down 12.6 pounds. And that is at an average of about one pound drop per week. So definitely celebrating that. It is a mini milestone to be in the double digits now on the weight loss, creeping my way up to 20 pounds of weight loss, sticking with the slow and steady, aiming for one pound loss per week, that's definitely my goal. I don't want to lose too much too fast for fear of the rubber band effect and rebounding. I know that a slow and steady burn definitely helps to keep the weight off a lot longer. And I ended up getting a couple questions about what supplements I'm currently taking. And as for right now, my current supplement list is none. I'm taking no supplements, no protein, no creatine, no BCAs, no... What else? I'll take a pre-workout that I picked up from Costco. The reason I'm not taking protein anymore isn't because I don't want to. It's that I don't have any right now. And (laughs) I ended up just running out. One of my coworkers, he gave me a tub of his protein. And then by the time that went out, I just have been reluctant to, or I guess sort of just putting it off going to Costco and buying another big bag. I think I, I have my heart set on getting a tub from the, the supplement shop or shop hay as the, as the modern folk call it. And I just, I'm a fan of muscle milk. I've tried other ones, but this one to me tastes good. And I'm also in no rush to, to get it. I'm, I did another podcast talking about reaching your athletic potential. And I feel that with things like creatine and BCAs, When I'm at the next phase of my weight loss journey, um, I'm sort of still, I still feel as if I'm in the first phase, the initial, the initial weight loss phase. When I, when I reach that next step, then I'll, I'll revisit the whole, should I get supplements and what supplements should I get? Um, When I revisit that, I may, I may go with creatine right out the gate, but for right now, no, no supplements, and I'm still making weight loss. So I I also put another post saying that I'm looking at my weight loss in phases and that right now, the first phase, I'm shooting for a caloric deficit. That is the main goal. The next phase, I might consider looking at macronutrients like carbs, proteins, and fats and ensuring that I'm getting a more, maybe a, a better quality calorie if that makes any sense, rather than, you know, like some folks might choose to do that Pop-Tart diet or as long as it fits your macros or if it fits your macros, that I-I-F-M, whatever that acronym. And it is something that I had tried a while back, but I was also a lot lighter than I am now. And my time in the gym was a lot more intense. I would do, uh, maybe 45 minutes of CrossFit before work, then I would go to work. And then after work, I would be back in the gym for another hour of weightlifting. So more of like a bodybuilding split, chest day, 
back and bicep day. Same as what I'm currently doing now, minus I'm not doing any CrossFit right now. But with that being said, doing the if it fits your macros, I don't really think it had that big of an effect on me at the time. And the only reason I say that is because I was working out an insane amount of time during the day. So it didn't really, I couldn't really gauge what was working in terms of my weight loss. If it was this whole, if it fits your macros lifestyle, or if it was primarily just working out a lot. So for right now, it's just maintaining that caloric deficit. I'll look at better quality calories in phase two. I'll focus more on how many carbs am I intaking, how many, how much protein, how much fat. For right now, it's just hit that number. That's all that matters. It's kind of an if it fits your macros setup, but I'm not really counting the macronutrients. So if I'm doing, say, 2,300 calories of carbs or 2,300 calories in a day and a majority of it is carbohydrates, well, at least I'm in a deficit, although my protein levels might be not in a very favorable position or my fats might be too high. Who knows? I'm I'm not really gauging it right now or tracking it right now. But yeah, that'll be, for me, that'll be phase two. And in, in the last post sort of talking about this whole, this whole thing, I put that my, my hope is to reach my goal without taking one sip of apple cider vinegar. I've seen so many people putting posts on Instagram, just shooting apple cider vinegar, putting apple cider vinegar and this, that, and the other. And it's just, no, no, I I'll cook with apple cider vinegar from time to time, but am I going to pour it in a shot glass? No, that is that is not what I want to do. And in phase one, phase two, that's not going to happen. Now, if down the line I reach like a really low weight level and I just want to, who knows, if I'm, if I'm trying to get shredded or something, like I, I feel like I'm almost there. I can see my abs, but not quite. Maybe a shot of apple cider vinegar will help push me over that edge. But I'm not going to do it right now at this stage in the game because... By the time I'm at that level where I need to consider more dramatic changes or more out of the box or out of the norm changes to my diet or my my workout regimen, I, it, it's like a year down the road. So that's another thing that I have to take into consideration too when looking at the weight loss journey in phases is that if creatine... If, if I've been making gains and progress on the bar and while lifting weights without it, then how do I know if those gains were all me if I were to take in the creatine right now? If I were taking the creatine right now, I wouldn't know if it was me or if it was the creatine. At least for now, I know it's, it's me. And with that being said, I've saved a lot of money in the process. So... Keeping with that, I also wanted to celebrate a milest- another milestone, actually. And this is that I today noticed and was able to, um, I wanted a word a certain way, but anyways, I'll just cut right to it. I ended up going down a notch on my belt. And that's definitely a milestone for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because I... I'm not wearing the belts that I used to wear my first time around. I was maybe 205, completely different body type, completely different clothing, completely different attire, all that. So in putting on the pounds, I've had to actually buy a new belt. I didn't really have to buy new clothes because I, you know, I saved my big boy clothes. They, I, I wasn't putting too much damage on them. And primarily, I, I primarily wear a lot of just gym clothes after work anyways. So moving down a notch in the belt and knowing that yeah, I'm one more notch closer to just tossing this belt in the trash or who knows, putting it back in storage. But I don't want to think that way. Like I'm just going to rebound back. But I'm... I'm one more notch closer to taking out my clothes from storage, the ones that I felt comfortable wearing, the ones that I had worked really hard to gain that type of physique or that type of body style. And 
yeah, just just all that kind of stuff. So it, it felt really good to to go down a notch. It felt really good to to celebrate that milestone. I went around work and told a couple of my coworkers and a lot of people are beginning to see the the progress and beginning to see the the importance of not eating out all the time because that's something that I felt like I was doing a lot early on when I was trying to lose weight or when I was trying to cut some of the foods that I was eating that early on I was I was being tempted to go out to eat I was forgetting to pack my lunch or I was throwing away meals that I had prepped or that my wife had prepped and I was just like oh forget it I'll just I'll just get a burger I'll just get a taco or whatever but it it's about staying vigilant and staying on the straight and narrow this path is one that definitely is going to have a lot of ups and downs it's not just you start here and you're just going to go straight to success you have to work at it and there's going to be a lot of things that come up along the way that are going to make it very difficult but remembering that there are little milestones along the way and today's for me was that notch in the belt it was going down one more notch I don't know if that's losing an inch on my waistline but I know that for the past two weeks not this last weekend, but the two prior to that, the scale had not moved at all. And that can be a little discerning when the scale is just, it just stays the same. If you're not taking any tape measurements, like measuring your neck, measuring your, your waist, measuring your thighs or your biceps, then you don't really know where you're losing weight. And if you don't write down your weight lifting, you don't know if you're gaining muscle. And if you don't take progress pictures, then you can't see the physical change when you look back. For me, three months ago, now things like my YouTube videos and some of the, some of the pictures that I take on Instagram are a good indication as to where my progress lies. Other things that I take note into are my work clothes and how they're fitting how my energy levels are in comparison to before. And there's one more thing, just, well, the belt, for example. And tomorrow is squats or leg day. Even my weightlifting belt, I'm going to have to adjust the the notch on that. So it's all pretty exciting stuff, and I'm definitely looking forward to continuing to make more progress just one pound at a time. It's definitely not a race for me. This is more of a marathon. So I'm looking in the long term and sort of the end game. But yeah, I want to guess I'll just leave it right there. This is a little mini update, little mini podcast about my milestone and my progress and today's shoulder day. So again, thank you guys for taking the time to listen to this podcast. If you are catching me on iTunes, be sure to leave a five star rating or review, either or, whichever. And if you listen to me on Stitcher, let me know. Because I am I put this up there, but I'm not quite sure how the analytics work. So I don't even really know if anybody's listening to this on Stitcher or not. And if you're listening to me on YouTube, sorry, once again, no video. But feel free to leave a thumbs up if you like what I had to say. If you guys have any topics or any questions for me, you can always send me a message directly through my Instagram. It is at Ramon underscore Campamore. That is C-A-M-P-O-A-M-O-R. And again, any topics, any, any comments, or even any words of inspiration, any and all are welcome. So until the next time, see ya.